What if Savage Opress joined Darth Sidious on Mandalore when he came to fight him and Maul? That's our story for today. First time doing a story with Savage. I really enjoyed it. Hope you guys do as well. And yeah, let's get right into the video. That's why I'm here. Our story begins in the office of Chancellor Palpatine as he is waiting for his ship to be readied. He is going on a personal mission, one that will stay off the records to Mandalore. Sidious was determined to kill his former apprentice, Maul, but a new opportunity seems to have arisen. Maul's brother, the one called Savage, has legitimate potential as a new Sith apprentice. Anakin would be great, and would still be pursued, but Savage was truly gifted, and with the right training, he could become something truly special. So Sidious took off to Mandalore, confronting Maul and Savage. His plans shifted from toying with the warriors to testing them as the fight began, and as they fought, Sidious could feel that Maul was still powerful, but Savage had strength inside of him that could be utilized so much more if unlocked. To Sidious, Maul was a failure. He had his chance, and the three warriors moved through the room, Sidious laughing as they tried desperately to take him out. Soon enough, Sidious threw Maul off of a balcony and turned to Savage. He told the Zabrak warrior that he now had two choices. He could die needlessly next to Maul, or he could truly join the Sith and find his real power. Savage said he would never join him, swinging at Sidious's head. The Dark Lord dodged and electrocuted Savage, throwing him down to Maul's level. Sidious then jumped down and told Savage that he feels his power, but only he can help turn him into a true Sith. And Savage watched as Sidious completely outmatched Maul, slicing into his arms, both legs, and cutting into his chest. Maul fell, breathing heavily, and Sidious told Savage he has one last chance, lifting Maul into the air. Maul told Savage not to listen, that Sidious is a deceiver, but now Savage was seeing what he must do. Maul was beaten, and he had a chance to survive and grow stronger, so he told Maul he was sorry. Sidious said, do it. So Savage spun and cut off the head of Maul, then knelt in front of Sidious. From here, Sidious would take Savage back to his lair on Coruscant. Dooku would not be informed of this, and he was too busy with the war to return here, so it was a secret location for Savage to train. And he would train with intensity. Sidious rarely slept, he didn't need to, so at night he would return here and train Savage without mercy. If Savage failed at any point, he would be electrocuted as a lesson. And within a couple months, as the war raged on across the galaxy, Savage had learned to harness his anger and become extremely powerful. His power even before meeting Sidious allowed him at least to stay in fights against Ventress, Obi-Wan, Dooku, and even Sidious himself. He'd killed Adi Gallia and some other weaker Jedi, but now he was extremely powerful and he was in need of a real test. Palpatine recently learned that a Republic Senator named Zast Trivak was traveling to a Separatist planet where peace negotiations were truly beginning to pick up. Palpatine decided that Savage would intercept this cruiser and kill everyone on board. This would only escalate tensions between Republic and Separatists, and so Savage took off to intercept the cruiser. What he and Palpatine did not know was that a certain Jedi and Senator duo were accompanying Zas Travak on his mission. Savage flew through hyperspace for the coordinates of the cruiser, and soon enough, he emerged right next to it, firing at the engines, and now they both exited hyperspace at the same time. Savage then entered in through the hangar. Savage exited his ship, taking out the Coruscant security troopers that were guarding the area, and he moved in, both sides of his lightsaber now ignited. In the cafeteria area, Anakin Skywalker and Padme Amidala were enjoying a meal together while keeping an eye on Senator Travak. When the cruiser began to shake, security alarms were beginning to go off. Anakin felt in the Force and found a familiar presence, and he also felt great power within him. Anakin got to Senator Travak and escorted him and Padme to their quarters. Throughout the ship, Savage was moving through, cutting down anyone in his path. This was a civilian cruiser, so it contained families of mothers, fathers, children, but Savage didn't care. He had a mission to find the Senator, so he was cutting them down, along with clone security on board to protect the Senator, demanding to know where the Senators were. Until eventually, 
he reached the hallway to the living quarters, where the people were staying. And on the other side of the hall, Anakin Skywalker stood with his lightsaber ignited. Savage wasn't here for pleasantries, he was here now to kill the Jedi. So he charged at Anakin with full speed. With a guttural roar, Savage lunged forward, his blade slashing through the air with frightening speed. Anakin met the attack head on, his own lightsaber deflecting blows. The corridor became a blur of red and blue as the two of them clashed with the fury. The panic screams of civilians trying to evacuate in escape pods could be heard in the distance as they continued their fight. Anakin's agility and skill were matched by Savage's raw power, each blow resonating in the force. Sparks flew as their blades collided, illuminating the corridor with flashes of light of red and blue. And with a mighty shove, Savage sent Anakin staggering backwards, the force of the blow throwing Anakin through the wall behind him, into the engine room. But Anakin recovered swiftly, flipping through the air, landing gracefully back on his feet, and the intensity of their battle was felt throughout the ship. Alarms were blaring, as systems began to malfunction under the strain of their destructive energy. Smoke billowed from ruptured conduits, as the ship groaned under the stress of the escalating conflict. As the battle raged on, Anakin drew Savage in, then unleashed a flurry of strikes. Caught off guard, Savage stumbled backwards, his guard momentarily faltering. But before Anakin could press his advantage, a sudden explosion from the engine room rocked the ship, sending them both flying backwards. Flames erupted from the conduits as alarms blared, signaling the imminent collapse of the cruiser. Anakin tried to get back up, but another huge force push from Savage sent him crashing into a fiery room, as Savage then used the force to crush the door. Anakin was stuck, and the Sith Lord took off, emerging inside the quarters where Senators Padme and Trevok were hiding. Savage reignited his saber and threw it across the room. It spun and cut through both Senators at once, and they fell dead. Savage completed his mission and took off into the hangar, getting into his ship and taking off as the cruiser was now completely crippled in space, devoid of life. Except for Anakin Skywalker, the Jedi Knight cut his way out of the burning room and stumbled back into the halls to find Padme dead. Anakin fell to his knees as he was left completely alone in space on a dead ship that had become a graveyard. Communications didn't work, nothing worked, and he only had so long before oxygen ran out. Back on Coruscant, Savage briefed Darth Sidious on everything that happened, telling him that things got complicated. He informed Sidious that Jedi Anakin Skywalker and Senator Padme Amidala were both on board, and both were taken care of. Sidious scowled as this was disappointing, but perhaps it opened up an opportunity. The galaxy was beginning to hate the Jedi, and with Anakin gone, there was no point in waiting much longer to end this war. So Sidious came up with a plan. Over the next couple weeks, the Jedi would be searching for Anakin and the missing cruiser all through the galaxy, but because it came out of hyperspace at a random point, no one could track it. Savage and Anakin's duel destroyed basically all technology inside, including tracking information. There was a rough area to where it could be, but it was so hard to find. Obi-Wan and Ahsoka were both extremely saddened by this, as Padme was on board as well. At this point in the war, Jedi were spread throughout the galaxy, numbers were wearing thin, and today, Palpatine began giving a speech to the Republic citizens. He began saying that negotiations to a peace treaty were close, and Senators Amidala and Trevak were assigned to bring the treaty to the Separatists. Palpatine continued, saying that they were all deceived by the Jedi, and that Jedi Anakin Skywalker was hired to protect the Senators on their journey. But now the truth has been revealed. Palpatine said that Anakin Skywalker murdered everyone on board, as it is the Jedi who have been standing in the way of peace. They continue this war, cutting down anyone who tries to stop it. Palpatine continued, saying that Anakin would have gotten away with it, like many Jedi have before him, if not for the brave clone troopers who stopped him, and provided the evidence to Palpatine before their deaths. And then, Palpatine said that the Jedi are all treasonous, ordering the clone troopers across the galaxy to execute Order 66. Across the galaxy, Jedi were killed off for committing treason against the Republic. Windu and Yoda were in the same Star Destroyer, and Palpatine had special orders for this Star Destroyer. Its path in hyperspace was redirected right into a moon by the clones. Yoda and Mace never even knew what was happening, as this destroyer exploded in an instant. 
Obi-Wan and Ahsoka were off with Cody, Rex, and the rest of the 212th and 501st on a search and rescue mission for Anakin when the order was given. There were three Star Destroyers in the area, and the one with Ahsoka and Obi-Wan was blown up, with Rex and Cody on board as well. The clones had no mercy. The mission was to simply kill the Jedi and anyone that was in the way. The temple was invaded by thousands of clones, led by Savage Opress, and it was completely overthrown. He moved through it without mercy, killing Kid Fisto, Shakti, many others, while countless clones overwhelmed the Jedi. On Sereno, Dooku was talking with Sidious, going over future plans, as Dooku was informed that the droid armies were suddenly shut down. He looked back up to Sidious, who now held a great smile. Sidious said goodbye to his apprentice, and Dooku looked to the sky. A fleet of Republic Star Destroyers emerged and began bombing Dooku's castle as the Separatist fleet defending Sereno was shut down, and Dooku was gone. Within a few hours, Savage stood with Sidious as the two of them were below the Senate chambers. Within the hour, Sidious, as Palpatine, would proclaim himself Emperor. There was only one loose end he had to clean up. He sent a Star Destroyer to the coordinates of Anakin Skywalker. Recently, the cruiser Anakin was killed on began to emit a signal, allowing Palpatine to have it hunted down and blown to pieces once and for all. But as Savage and Palpatine stood here, Palpatine was informed by the Star Destroyer that the cruiser was gone. The only thing in the area was open space and scraps of the ship that was once here. Palpatine insisted that they double check the coordinates, but within seconds he ended the call. Anakin Skywalker was no longer in the cruiser. Instead, he just entered the Senate office, staring down Savage and Sidious. Sidious snarled at Anakin, asking how he was still alive. And Anakin, for the weeks he was alone in the cruiser, destroyed emotionally because of what happened to Padme, put every second he had into repairing it just enough to fly. Eventually he did it, and he was able to get safely to a planet where he took his own ship. It would have been impossible for nearly anyone else to fix. And upon returning to Coruscant, Anakin found out everything that happened. How he was blamed for killing his own wife, how the Jedi were all dead, and how Palpatine was about to make a special announcement. So here he was, to stop him. But he didn't tell Palpatine any of this, he didn't say a single word. Instead, he ignited his saber, saying this was for his friends and for his wife, and he ran into battle. Anakin's saber was blazing to life, there was no fear in his heart, only a burning hatred forged from the ashes of losing everyone he loved. Savage quickly met his onslaught with strength, each clash of their blades echoing through the chamber like thunder, as Sidious watched with excitement and fear. For Anakin, he would kill Savage. He needed to. He needed to have his revenge, for his own peace. And Anakin fought with a relentless determination, born from this pain. With every strike, he channeled his grief and rage, driving himself forward with ferocity. His lightsaber moved with perfect precision, carving through the air, pushing Savage back. Sidious noticed his apprentice was losing, so with a wave of his own hand, he joined the fray, his lightsaber springing to life with a sizzling hum. But Anakin fought on. He dodged, parried, weaving through the onslaught of his opponents with the power of the Chosen One. And in a burst of speed, Anakin closed the distance between himself and Savage with a perfect strike. Then he disarmed the towering Sith, sending Savage's blade clattering to the ground and throwing his own saber to cut Savage in half. Sidious watched with fear as power was radiating off of Anakin, and Anakin turned to him now. With a scream, he unleashed the full extent of his power, channeling the force into a devastating assault that left the Sith Lord stumbling backwards. With a final decisive blow, Anakin drove his saber through Sidious's heart, and he fell dead. Now Anakin stood alone amidst the wreckage of his enemies, his breath ragged, his body battered, but he was alive. He'd fought with nothing to lose, and he emerged victorious, a beacon of light in a galaxy shrouded in darkness. And he left, sprinting through the halls, knowing if he was seen, he would be killed. Within the hour, as the Senate chamber opened for Palpatine, the Senators only saw his dead body, and chaos would ensue. Chaos that Anakin wanted no part of. He would leave the Republic to rebuild on its own, as he would live out his days honoring those he lost. Padme, Rex, Ahsoka, Obi-Wan, so many others. He would find peace after many years, living alone, isolated, saddened by the war. 
and after a decade, the galaxy was at peace under Chancellor Mon Mothma, and Anakin was living his new life as a mechanic in the Outer Rim. The Jedi and the Sith were gone, at least for now, and Anakin found happiness in his new life. And folks, that is our story for today. I wanted to go down a path where Savage and Sidious at least get like really, really close. I want I was thinking about a dark side ending where Anakin just dies on the cruiser, but I wanted it to kind of be where nobody wins. Because I think maybe if Sidious decides to take on a new apprentice, um, Anakin will be just the one to stop it. But ultimately, you know, there wasn't a super happy ending in this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought. Um, if you want to become a member and get exclusive content there, link in the description. Thanks a ton, everybody. Appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video.